Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, thanks for coming here today. Uh, if you're here for foe, you're at the right place. Uh, if you're not um, by mistake here, uh, well, the door is locked. <laughs> you have to wait here and uh, until I finished. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Shoho. I work for Broadcasting Board of Governors, the federal agency that oversees Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, Radio Free Asia, Radio and TV Marty, and so on. Together, those broadcasters bring news to people around the world in 60 languages and reach 175 million people every week. Um, I do some internet anti-censorship R&D and other IT related stuff. And I also create foe. Uh, let's talk about censorship. We live in the United States and we can browse the internet freely. Well, almost except when you're using your company or public libraries, networks, or if you work for the DOD. <clears throat> However, for internet users live in certain countries, things are not so bright. Some governments censor what their internet users can see. See, uh, for example, you're in China, and you want to browse the Voice of Americans website, you'll likely get an error message from your web browser telling you the website doesn't exist or that you cannot connect to the website. Uh, this is probably because some governments think uh, Voice Americans website is evil. If you ever laid eyes on the Voice Americans website, you the evil force will probably infect you with some terrible disease, cause you to vomit yesterday's compound chicken, and make your head spin like your grandfather's turntable. But seriously, um, governments censor the internet for different reasons. Some vow to protect their citizens from porn. Uh, others censor the internet for their own political gains. There are many ways that a country can censor the internet. The most common method is to use some type of firewall to block IP addresses, domain names, uh, protocols, and uh, network packets. Most countries use blacklists to keep track of uh, indecent websites. However, some countries, such as China, have very sophisticated uh, censor censorship systems that are capable of blocking validating web pages on the fly. In other words, if the system detects that web page contains uh, indecent materials, <clears throat> the system can disconnect it, the connection between the user and the website on the fly. Um, so here's the big problem. Some internet users in censored countries want to read Voice Americans news. However, the website is inaccessible, and so are the RSS feed, the Facebook page, and the Twitter updates. The number of ways that a user can circumvent the censorship. First, um, you can try to find a web-based proxy such as the ones maintained by Siphon. However, unless you know where to look or have some social connections, web-based proxy can be hard to find. Second, you can download some circumvention programs, uh, such as FreeGay or Tor. In many ways, these programs are more secure and offer better support for multimedia contents than web-based proxies. Third, you can purchase VPN access. This is the one case that many can buy uh, happiness. If you can afford the price, 
paid VPN service is probably your best bet for circumventing censorship. VPN supports most network applications, so you can use it uh, to bro uh, browse web, streaming videos, uh, use FTP to download files, check emails, or do almost everything with it. So now there will be soon a new tool. Uh, it's called Foe. Foe stands for fee over email. Uh, Foe was created to serve two purposes. First, allows users to receive email contents such as RSS feeds, documents, or small programs. Second, provides an additional channel for other circumvention tools to reach their audience. As the name implies, Foe is based on email technologies. Uh, but exactly what is full and how it works? I find the simplest explanation is by telling people the full sends contents, such as ISS feeds through emails, much like attaching a file in the email. Uh, most people will get the idea, but we we'll ask the question, why do we need full then? Mm, you know, that's a tough question. <laughs> but I finally came up with a good reason. Foe fetches the content for you, uh, with, whether it is an ISS fee or downloadable program or a document. Without Foe, you won't be able to get the content you want because the target website is blocked in the country where you live in. To many people, email is just email. There's nothing special about it. However, there's one thing that most people overlooked. Uh, it's more difficult to block an email than to block a website. Why? A website usually has a dedicated IP address or a dedicated domain name, or both. It's quite unusual that a, a website will change its IP address and the domain name regularly, or else your customers won't be able to find you. An email, on the other hand, can be sent from a different email address and a different mail server. The only thing that a sender needs to reach you is your email address. In addition, you, if you are using an email service in a free country, such as Gmail or Hotmail, there's no way that a sensor can block the emails that are received, even if the sensor knows the sender's email address. So the only way for a sensor to block all offending emails is to block all foreign email servers. So unless you live in North Korea, well, Mr. Kim is basically saying that no one needs to have contact with outside world. It is highly, highly unlikely that a country will block all foreign email servers. And this is what Foe is betting on, that we'll always be able to obtain an email account from a service provider that is outside of your home country. So Foe can use it to fetch contents for you. Now let's look at the more complicated version of how Foe works. When a user re requests a content, say for example, a RSS feed, the Foe server will fetch the content from the RSS server pack the content into an email, and then send the email to the user through the full mail server. Once the email arrives the user's mail server, the full client will initiate an encrypted connection to the mail server and download the email security. 
The full client would then extract the content from the email and pass it to the user. Please note, uh, there are two critical components in the diagram. Number one, the, connect the connection between the full client and the user's mail server must be encrypted. The purpose of the encryption is to second when content filtering imposed by the government. Number two, the user's mail server is outside the sensor region. In other words, the user must obtain an email account from a service provider outside he, her or his home country. The reason is to prevent the sensor from forcing the service provider to block full emails. These two components are the keys which allow foe to effectively deliver contents to users in censored countries. Um, now let's look at some key features that foe offers. Foe can deliver ISS or other contents to the users. Foe is capable of circumventing internet censorship. Um, unlike web-based proxy, Foe does not need to cha keep changing its IP address or domain name in order to circumvent censorship. Foe is capable of pushing contents to the user when necessary. This is useful if Foe ever needs to patch a critical security flaw or need to make an emergency announcement. So foe is t very difficult to block. In order to effectively block the foe service, the sensor needs to be blocked all foreign mail servers. If you are a developer and are interested in writing your foe software, you will be delighted to know that FO is easy to implement because it is based on email technologies. You can find a lot of software libraries on the internet that will allow you to create your own version of FO easily. We will also make FO's source code available, available to the public so you can use it in your software as well. Because of FO relies on email technologies, it has relatively low in infrastructure costs if you decided not you need to host your full server. So foe is not a silver bullet for an internet censorship problems. Here are some limitations. Foe needs the user to set up a foreign email accounts. Although it shouldn't be too difficult, it is an extra step that users need to take in order to use FO. FO is not designed to deliver large size contents. For example, users cannot use FO to get video files. FO also is not designed for web browsing or other texts, which the users expect immediate feedbacks. Unlike web-based proxy, users need to download full client in order to use the full service. This can become a challenge if the full project website is blocked in the user's home country. Uh, this is not a problem unique to full. Other circumvention tools also have the same challenge. Unlike Tor, FreeGate, and Siphon, FO is not a proxy solution. It is created to help users to receive small contents such as RSS, small programs, documents, and new proxy addresses. Since FO is based on email, it can easily be put to uh, other platforms. In its initial release, FO will support Microsoft Windows only. However, 